Well, the markets are laser focused on economic data points in recent weeks. So let's check in now with Michelle Meyer, head of U.S. economics at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Uh, Michelle, the underlying worry here is about inflation. What's your take? I mean, are we really seeing inflation? The consumer price index, the latest reading showed a slight increase in consumer prices. Yeah, I think what we're seeing is certainly a trend from the disinflation we had last year to one of reflation. So certainly inflation is heading higher. I think what's important to remember is that it's going to be a gradual move up. So the January inflation prints, whether it was wage growth, CPI, PPI, PCE, all of that numbers, all of those numbers released for the January data were very, very strong. And that spooked the markets in early February. And now that we're seeing the February data come out, it's all looking a little bit soft. So I think that's generally what we're going to see with inflation one step forward two steps back um, which leads to a higher trend in inflation but it's very very gradual and so perhaps that market reaction in february off of those wage numbers was a bit of a overreaction it seems that way yeah i mean I, you know i think it's it's this it's an acceptance of the narrative that we are in an environment where the unemployment rate is low there will be some wage pressure and i think there was just a scare that it was going to be a fundamental shift in the environment and that does not appear to be the case. But still, are there too many factors in the economy right now that could cause inflation, right? Tax reform, President Trump's tariffs, a tightening labor market. We saw an increase in labor force participation rate. Yeah, you know, the economy is, is, is running in an environment where 4.1% unemployment rate, that's typically indicative of, of inflationary pressures. You have um, very healthy economic growth with otherwise most people assuming lower potential or trend growth. So sure, the backdrop is favorable for inflation. But to me, the question is not will we see inflation, it's what's the magnitude of that inflation, what's the speed of that inflation. And that's where I think we need to be careful, which is that it's going to be slow and it's going to be bumpy. We don't have an inflation problem per se where inflation is going to jump up to an alarming level. And you actually say in your recent analyst note that the Fed is stuck between a steel mill and a hard place. Explain that. Yeah, well, <laughs> in that respect, it's, it has to do with the tariffs, of course. So, you know, if things were to escalate and uh, we have a more of a, of a real trade war where the tariffs on steel and aluminum end up being something much broader, then it creates some problems for the Fed because tariffs, generally speaking, speaking are stagflationary. It boosts inflation. It hurts real growth. Um, so that would be an exogenous shock to the Fed and something they would have to calibrate to. But as of right now, I don't think it's something that's heavily influencing Fed policy in the near term. So how many rate hikes are you expecting in 2018? We think we'll see three rate hikes this year, three rate hikes next year. The risks are skewed towards that fourth hike happening this year. So we'll see how the data evolves. We'll see how the inflation data moves in particular. But um, I think the Fed, you know, is is still in the in the environment of a gradual hiking cycle, having some patience, but at the same time wanting to achieve that real normalization of rates. Can we withstand a fourth rate hike this year? Is there that much of a difference between a third one and a fourth one? I don't think it's huge. I think, yeah, I think the economy will be able to withstand a fourth hike if that's what the Fed deems to be appropriate. Um, and for the Fed to hike that fourth time, presumably they would have to see that strong growth in the economy, the momentum um, in the economy. And they'd also have to make sure that financial conditions were generally still supportive. So if you had a huge tightening of financial conditions after those three hikes, that fourth hike might not be appropriate. So they're calibrating where they are in their inflation objective, where they're seeing growth, and then how financial conditions are reacting. New Fed Chair Jerome Powell is going to take on his first press conference in a few weeks. It's widely expected that he'll announce a rate hike. Are there any style differences that you'll be watching for, for him as compared to his predecessor, Janet Yellen? Yeah, so I think we learned a little bit about um, about Fed Chair Powell in the testimony in front of Congress a few weeks back, um, formerly known as the Humphrey Hawkins testimony. Um, so it seems like he is a bit more direct in his responses. Um, he gives really targeted answers. Um, so I imagine that will probably be the case in the press conference as well. But in terms of his substance, it's not all that different than what Yellen had laid out in the sense of the Fed has to proceed gradually. We're, they're not looking to create major disruptions to the economy or to the markets, um, data dependent. Uh, so, so, the, so the reaction function seems largely the same. Maybe Jay Powell has become a little bit more hawkish of late, but I don't think it's a significant difference. 
And, and before we go, we had President Trump block Broadcom's desire to buy Qualcomm, and some market watchers are worried that President Trump will block future deals, leading to a slowdown in M&A activity. Just in general, how does M&A activity impact the economy? Is there a link? Um, yeah, so obviously I don't have specific views on, on, on that or, or, or what's going to happen going forward, but in terms of how you think about the feedback to the economy, you know, when you see M&A, you tend to have efficiency gains, um, which means that a redeployment of labor, uh, so there's some displacement of labor, but then ultimately maybe you have some productivity advancements. So um, it's all about the, the, the magnitude to the extent of how, how much M&A are we seeing and, and how does that differ from previously in the cycle. All right, Michelle Meyer from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, thanks for coming back with us. My pleasure.